And welcome back to another GAC podcast, where we are going to be discussing games, anime, computers, and collectibles, but not necessarily all in one week. I am still your host, Harrison. To my left, Faust. And to my right, <sighs> James. <laughs> I just had to copy you because you're <laughs> <laughs> breathing into the mic. I well, I took a puff right before we started, <laughs> and I didn't want to like just <laughs> ruin the day. He's a puff. Speaking of... Um, Things, yeah, whatever's been you've been vaping on today smells like baby powder. James. Excuse me, excuse me, I did not vape. <laughs> uh huh. So, you, you certainly uh, own plenty of it. Yeah. yeah. No, actually, I don't. I'm the only one. That's sometimes plenty of it. Yeah. So <laughs> one is some people would consider one too much. Right. With uh, everything that's been going on. A lot mm-hmm. has been going on, but you know what I've done this week? Nothing. I know. We know nothing is supposed well, to be coming out of your okay, head Okay, I played a lot week. of board games. I could talk about those if you guys want me to talk about more board games. You, know, you seem to be coming in with board games every week. and I mean, they are games, and they are kind of... And they actually, are collectibles. They are experiencing uh, quite the comeback. That's debatable right now because, I mean, that's the thing is, can, can it be a collectible? I mean, it is games, though, and that's that's one of the things we talk about. Well, Collectible is questionable because if anything is that nowadays marketed as, as a collectible limited edition, I don't necessarily consider it a collectible. It's more of a market grab. So... I, I have a hard time admitting to like the collectible status of things like that, but mm-hmm. I, I do understand a very wonderful term, especially for those people selling on eBay and indoor flea markets and stuff like that, and it's called vintage. And I, I, got a full, yes. I got a full dose of vintage because during my thrifting run yesterday, I actually ended up walking into an indoor flea market, and oh my God. Did you get fleas? Uh, no. <laughs> no, I got uh, Duke Nukem 3D Atomic Edition for nice. $1. Wow, that's so, that's a steal. Yeah, no, that's a fine for me. And it was because you know you go into an indoor flea market and people are not really sure what they're selling. So did you get it with the box and the manuals and no, everything? No, I didn't. Well, not. then it's then not- it's not a collectible, <laughs> and it's not I, vintage. I found just having access to the files there and having a genuine copy of Atomic Edition for use mm-hmm. for the uh, source ports and stuff like that is going to be to my benefit. Cool, but um, there were stuff like old Scrabble games, Clue games. I think we saw Castle Risk. In inbox, um, the thing about it is when you go to these places, it's like getting a board game from a thrift store. Is you know you, you kind of for indoor flea markets and stuff like that, they're sort of private sellers renting booths at these places and they're mm-hmm. selling stuff with the idea that people are coming in to buy their stuff. Yeah, and expecting expecting sort of a, a garage sale kind of quality and a garage sale kind of honesty when it comes to that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, I did see a lot of old board games. Uh, amongst a whole bunch of other weird stuff and things like that. So uh, I will admit, between that and the fact that stuff like Etten Games, the place that you like to go, I go every for Thursday, yeah. weekly game nights, and the uh, there's another, there was a board game library uh, down in Knob Hill. I'm not sure if Oh, yeah, doing, there's plenty of other games yeah, places out there. But those places are popping up just as with just as much frequency as like land cafes are coming back as well so that we reported on a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. So... I'd say, yeah, board games are pretty relevant. I think so, yeah. too. So does your cat. Yes. <laughs> Boy, drove too him, bad that wasn't on camera. Drove him right up right. the wall. <laughs> I just so, enjoy being social, and that's my way of being social. So, so anybody that just saw us looking or heard anything on the mics, we just watched uh, the cat decide to... Climb the couch. <laughs> Climb the couch, yeah, because we have, we have one of the couches stood up on end, and so we now have the cat perched on top of it like a gargoyle to look down on us with scorn. Be a real scorn, shame if somebody like walked over do. and kicked it. Yeah. You're a horrible person. I didn't say knock the cat down, and I didn't say how hard. Just, like, startle the cat. Jeez, you're a horrible now person. You're, now, now you're wheedling out of it. So... Back to these board games. Where is this board game that you've been playing, James? Well, I got to play a Dungeon Delver, or is it Diver? Didn't and you Didn't you already talk about one of these? No. I've never played any of Dungeon Delvers. Well, didn't you play that Lord of the Ring games? Isn't that... That is a so, card-building game. So it's a board game. Okay. And you're in a dungeon. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's a... It's a um, 
it's a huge box. Mm -hmm. It weighs like 45 pounds. And it's it it was a Kickstarter. That's a lot of game. And it's a lot of game because it has legacy mode in it. Yeah. And it also it's also it's a European style Euro style game. Yeah. And it has cards in it. Whoa. And it has a board and it has figures. What's a Euro uh, style game? They use dice uh, cards instead of dice. As far so as I know right now, I don't know all the it's details. It's dice bolt. What? Deuce bolt. No. Dice bolt. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> no, you're, you're reaching. Yeah, you're <laughs> reaching. Shut up. Let me, so, let me reach my dad jokes. Uh, Go on, though. Yeah, your dad jokes. So this game costs $140 at this GameStop uh, uh, Etten's. At Etten Games, you can buy it for $140. When it's available. When it's available. On Amazon, it's close to $200. Dang. that's mm-hmm. You must, like, it's good that And they're... it's not a game that you just sit down and play one setting. You play it over time like Dungeons & Dragons. It has role-playing essence in it. Yeah. And you have these characters that you start off with, and you have this giant board, and you level up. And it takes a lot of points to go up to the next level. Mm-hmm. And it take, and you have certain health points. And you unlock other characters as you go on in this campaign. And it has even character sheets, too. You can write down items you pick up. Hmm. And in your card, your deck, is what you, basically the goal is to complete whatever objective. Like the card has objectives. Mm-hmm. You have a certain time frame to, to finish it. You have a certain amount of cards. You either finish the objective to win the game, or you run out of cards and your character retires. Hmm. It's fun. Wow. That is a fun game. Like I said, it's a huge game, and you start with, like, you know, the rogues, the tinkerer, or whatever, and you have the fantasy-type characters, and then the, the guy pulls out the, the sheet, and he talks to you. Like the last time we went played last night, we started off as I played a tinkerer, which is, of course, the hardest character I could pick. Of yeah, course, of that's course. what I do. That's what you do. Well, because you don't actually get to choose your characters on – you base it on the picture. You see a picture, I want that class. You pull the, the envelope out, has all the character stuff in there, and you play that character. Oh, yeah? You don't get to pick whatever. Was it Was it you and all your friends uh, playing the game for the first time? Me or? playing it for the first time, And yes. everybody else had played it? Uh, me and Jesse only played it the first time. Yeah. My, my friend Sully and his uh, friend – I think Mary. Yeah, uh, there was their second or third time. Okay, because they own it, so so they I'm, brought it to the store. For I'm just me trying to, try to get it. like because you you were there for a while. Yeah, playing. Did you and did you retire or did you get your condition? No, we won. Or? Yeah. Our our objective was just to defeat all the bad guys in the dungeon. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a really difficult one, so I'm happy because okay. you have like normal bad guys, you have elite bad guys, and ours started off as we were chasing down a target. That we had to kill and we followed him into like this of course this dungeon that goes down you find the moss covered door and mm-hmm. you follow him down into it and then we had to fight a uh, bat bunch of bad guys it turns out the reason why he ran to the back and the reason why all the bandits were in the cave to begin with is they were trying to summon undead oh and we we beat it good so how's that- how is this different than the um dungeons and dragons based board games because we have, they only played the basic stuff for me to get the understanding of it. They didn't want me to dive into all the other legacy stuff because there's legacy thing you can add on. There's another uh, details you can add on. There's like six other things you can add on to this game, but I just want to know the basics. Sounds like magic. I'm going to hit you. I'm going to hit you. Why? what I do? <laughs> It has cards like magics, but it doesn't play like magic. No, I'm saying there's basics and there's all these other things that oh, get okay, yeah. really complicated like, and everything. Yeah, this like, game can get really complicated. Dude, this game's like this big. A 45-pound box for $140. Yep. It better be big. Um, like Magic, Dungeons & Dragons has gone through so many revisions that you can basically pick it up at any point along mm-hmm. the timeline and play a completely different type of game. And then, then within that, with Dungeons and Dragons, not so much magic. There are so many different ways to play a Dungeons and Dragons game. This sounds like it's sort of a, a an homage to that in some sense. It kind of is going because it is basically you find the moss covered door and then you see a hallway. And yeah, and you use cards instead of dice, and you have like yeah. your. But the interesting thing is, so you have like a th- I had ten cards. So what that was, was my deck, yeah. and I, I have my characters, that little character thing there, and you have a cards that you can use Mm -hmm. they go to the discard pile and cards that go to the lost pile now the cards that go to the discard pile when you rest you can discard one and get all those cards back now the ones that are lost are lost forever Mm. so the moment you run out of your deck 
your character retires. Ah. But if you rest, you get those back, you and get you those sacrifice back. a card, and you get the cards back. Okay. So it sounds like it's pretty well involved and wouldn't would be entertaining for an evening or three or four. Yeah. But oh, it's it's something that you you set up on a table and you don't move. So what is it called again? Gloomhaven. Gloomhaven. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the figurines are kind of like I saw what got my interest in it when I was at the store is they had the they had their display because they brought like four of them in, and they have a figure and it kind of reminded me of Warhammer. Yeah. And I was like, dude, Warhammer. She's like, that's not Warhammer. And then she talked about it. And I was like, I don't have $140 <laughs> to give you. I'm sorry. I have like bills and responsibilities. Yeah. Or I would just be like, shut up and take my money. Says the man who buys $100 statues. I don't buy $100 statues. Oh, $100 worth of anime. No, I haven't bought anime in a long time. But um. actually, the the I think I think <laughs> I think both the hundred dollar statues and the huge collection of anime were given to him. To tell you the truth, the statue was bought by my friend who sold some figurines at a comic place because he was moving to Japan, mm-hmm. and he sold it. And he's like, "What do you want? I have like sixty bucks, seventy bucks left." Yeah, and I was like, "That one, that one," because <laughs> it was like seventy five dollars. And I was like, "Here's your five bucks." Yeah. And I took it back. And I was like, "Yeah," and then it broke later. And I was all, "Eh, I don't feel bad," <laughs> because it was free and it was, it was from. Uh, the movie, not the anime series, because it's uh, I want to say Nadesco, Nadeska, Mar- Martian, Martian su- successor. successor, Nadesco, Nadesco. So, but it was from the movie, not the series, and I've never seen the movie, mm-hmm. so I was just all, man, my statue broke. Oh well, because <laughs> it's I hate that they sell these seventy-five dollar statues and it makes it's out of cheap plastic. It like fell from like this far and like the hair broke and i was like what well, fuck you yeah i put it away yeah i don't really like to collect that kind and of the stuff. anime i bought from my friend because he was getting rid of it and i was like do, do you need money yeah here you go here you go yeah take all this anime but yeah i would buy that game actually honestly i'm tempted to buy it but i even told sully when i was talking to him i was like i don't you're the only person I'm going to play this with. Why am I going to spend 140 bucks? But if you do have people that you want to play games with, and this is you guys and you all of you, Gloomhaven is totally worth it. It's worth very popular. It's worth, worth $200. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, it's That's a little steep for The moment they like me. got <laughs> their stock in that night, they sold two immediately. Of course. It I think it's worth it. I played it. I had lots of fun. It was a blast. I just don't I, know enough people to spend that money. I'd probably go to Eden Games or some other board game library with some friends and try it out. Exactly. And, you know, think, is this something we want to play on the regular? Because the, the the one board game that we have sunk a lot of Munchie. money into. I was going to get to that. We've sunk a lot of money into it. Before that, it was Magic. We were all getting into Magic. And we yeah. We played for right around Innistrad and the surrounding editions. Oh, I continued a little to play bit. after that, but yeah. Yeah, I didn't. Um, but... Yeah, we sunk a lot of stuff into Munchkin, and we played like all the various types of Munchkin and different mixes and everything. My mm-hmm. personal favorite for Munchkin is Munchkin Apocalypse because it adds a secondary condition that can et- try and end the game a little faster than a normal Munchkin game, especially if you're mixing it, mixing sets around. You can't do that at Edens, by the way. You can't mix the Munchkin sets? You can't sets? mix the Munchkin sets. Oh, that sucks. I can see why. They're a yeah. store, yeah. and people... Um, Don't put stuff away properly. Exactly. Yeah. So people. That's why. Anyway, yeah. Uh, as far as those games are concerned, they're they're fun. The thing is, we played them to death. Mm-hmm. Well, I still all play the various skins, iterations so. and stuff like that. I mean, we still play it on occasion and stuff like that. But I think what really like soured my enthusiasm for Munchkin was playing not playing Munchkin, but playing Munchkin Panic. That game was fun. There's. It just seems like there's just way too much to mod- to monitor, and you're, it's almost designed to. Like you, you really have to be on top of it to win. It's yeah, of, I guess so. It's sort of like a Dark Souls board game. It's no, just, it's not uh, like the, the Dark Souls board game. There's a Dark Souls board yes, game. There is. Oh Jesus! So, <laughs> what, are, what are you interrupting our, our stuff for? That's got to be a game's name okay. or something. Um, <clears throat> did you speaking of games? Yeah. Because I've never tried a dungeon diving or delver or diver game like that in yeah. my life. That's why I told her, I was like, I need to try it first 
before I dish out money. Because what if I don't like these type of games? Mm -hmm. And then someone's like being the devil's advocate. Well, you could buy it and resell it. I'm like, or I can let someone who enjoys it buy it right now and not be that douchebag. Sorry, no. Well, (laughs) soon there's going to be a lot less places to buy these games. Why is that? Because Toys R Us is actually looking to close down not just a certain number of stores like they've been talking about, but they're at the point now of saying, we're going to close all of our stores oh. in the week. But that's not the only place where they can get those. No, but the thing is, that is one a major national retailer for a lot of games and True. everything like that. And so they are preparing to liquidate all of their stores in the U.S. So the thing is, when there's a store liquidation like this, it's not just the product, but we're also talking the display cases and everything like this. Yeah. So this is also a good time if you want one of those like um, video game retro playing stands. Go pick through the corpse and take everything of worth and use. Yeah. Pretty much. I'm yeah. going to be sad when Toys R Us is gone. 182 stores. Um, I mean, I was... We're going to be closed, but now they're going to close them all. Yeah. Why are they closing them? Money. M- money. They have $5 billion in debt. Damn. Um, yeah. It's just it, the, the idea of a, of a big box brick and mortar store designed entirely around selling toys. And games. And, and games. Um, just doesn't really Man, work. I'm just that's, stealing that's, your that's, words today. That's so. Yes, you are. That's <laughs> so. That's weird. Considering you're the one <laughs> stealing them. So, like a small a small place, like a, a comic shop or a collectible shop or something like that. Mm-hmm. That's more sustainable because it can it can generate sort of a regular play customer base and something like that. But Toys R Us, like I remember going pretty avidly around the time that we got an NES for the first time mm-hmm. in my home, and that's because that was the one place we knew. That we could get get games, and then there was a KB Toys in the local mall. Yep. And we figured out we could get games there, and not only that, but then all of a sudden, like Blockbuster Hollywood Video were covering video games, and when they when they were done renting them, they would they would sell those, and it, it just kind of like the the whole gaming boom, kind of made yeah. it so that Toys R Us couldn't really Compete. accomplish being being a a known and notable retailer for that kind of thing, and so they concentrated on. The collectible markets and the youth, the youth markets and stuff like that. Well, they, I mean, they still sell a lot of toys. Mm-hmm. They still sell, you know, they sell a lot of uh, baby products, and that's where you get your Hot Wheels and everything like that, typically from bikes and everything. Um, and Nerf guns. And Nerf lots guns. Of Nerf lots guns. of Nerf guns. Here, here's the thing: twenty percent of toys bought in the U.S. are still bought through Toys R Us. So that's a huge. So gap that's going to be made in the market. So why don't they do something like open up events there, like like Nerf gun tournaments, or like open up the section of the store, change it to like a Nerf gun tournament for kids to have fun? Too why? late for that. Yeah, it's too late. They're they're so far in debt that they're basically going to have to liquidate just to pay off their cut their losses. Yeah, well, essentially, it it sucks. So basically, they should have thought of these things beforehand instead of waiting to the last minute. But the other thing was definitively. And it was almost kind of damning because of their their I don't want to grow up I'm a Toys R Us kid kind of thing. Yeah, is they did kind of promote the idea that the the shoppers the people who would go there necessarily were people who were buying for kids or taking their kids there to find out the kind the kinds of toys they like. Yeah, and when you stop being a kid, it unfortunately it happens. Kids, sorry. When you stop being a kid, it's almost like you stop going to Toys R Us until you have kids again. Until you have kids again, and that's a huge gap to to wait. To, to say, oh, I should probably go back to Toys R Us. Yeah. I have been dragged to Toys R Us. I've gone than... back to Toys R Us <laughs> for Nerf guns. Yeah, I, I, Office. But I never really thought to go to Toys R Us for anything that I would be looking to buy because for a while there, uh-huh. in, in our generation at least, like the big thing the big thing that was marketed for us after a certain point in time was technology. You know, yeah. it, was, it was getting the, the computers and the ga- those video games for the computers. And, and when you can get everything online cheaper. Oh, that 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 eventually became a thing too. Was online retail was just it's just too diff, too hard to compete with, as far as something like having to go to Toys R Us and the markup that Toys R Us does. Like I've walked into Toys R Us more than any other grown man really should, and while he's looking at action figures and stuff like that, I I'm interested in going and looking at what kind of video games they are. And as far as retailers go, like they had very little as far as like clearance or discounted games and stuff like that. And they're charging not just retail, but sometimes a couple of bucks over retail for things like that. And not really having too many titles because the other thing was Toys R Us was restricting themselves to youth markets. They, they weren't trying to bring in the adult stuff unless it was absolutely something that was going to sell. 
they yeah they ended up cutting out a lot a lot of that adult things unless it was um some of the collectible stuff like the transformers and all but they shied away from the uh like the todd mcfarlane and the adult style action Mm -hmm. figures because it gave a bad image for the parents buying for their kids yeah and it's like you know they're they're little you know, knee high kid could go wandering off somewhere and end up seeing something traumatizing to them. Weirdly enough, but yeah, I mean, it, in a, in a way, it's like that doesn't really work. If you're going to do an online retailer thing, if you're going to do a, a big box retail kind of thing, online retail is. You know what's one of my distinct memories from uh, from Toys R Us back in the day? Mm-hmm. You know, it's like what was like one of the toys that like any red blooded kid wanted? Any- Super Soaker. Besides the Super Soaker, before the Super Soaker. Big Wheel. And the Big Wheels, besides that. Trampoline? You know. Okay, maybe it's just me being an army brat, but... <laughs> I know, right? He's all, what? And we're like, there. He's well, like, no, had, not that. You had G.I. Joes. Yeah. And so with the G.I. Joes, one of the things is, it's like, you know, um, BB guns were also very big. Yeah. Okay. And pop in, in the pop cap style guns. Mm-hmm. One, one of the things I remember was the uh, Fisher Price... M16. I'm serious. Mr. Yeah. Price made it an M16 replica back in the 80s. You know, and that's just one of those things where it's just like, man, the, you yeah, know. But we, we also lived through the point where they took away the toy guns. Like the Super Soaker thing was, <sighs> was sort of a resurgence of that. The Nerf thing was sort of a resurgence of that. But for a while, yeah, buying plastic recreations of actual military style hardware, albeit smaller for kid, yeah. for the use of kids, it became a problem, and it actually. And then later, they started putting those red caps. Yeah, you on the had to front. put the little the orange, orange caps cap. on the, the orange cap on the front as like yeah. a way to identify. And then, like, yeah, and then, and like then the that handle didn't... had to be orange. Yeah, and then suddenly they're all well, just like, like these bright neon like, you colors. Know what? Yeah, yeah. If you're gonna make something that's gun shaped in any way, shape, or form, if it has to be gun, it has to be gun shaped because of the function of the toy. All of a sudden. Well, I I remember this had distinct things. I mean, it's like we got sitting back here uh, yeah. a Megatron yeah. pre orange cap. You know, but it's like it changed the industry so much for a bit. It was like, you know, Megatron became a tank because mm-hmm. a tank is safer than, <laughs> than a P. Walter 38 gun, you know. And and then it got even worse after the fact. Once we once we kind of like weathered the whole I thought thing. he was a Luger. He is. P. Walter 38. But the original. No, that is the original. That is the original. It's a mm. P. Walter 38. P. 38. That's actually the kind of handgun that I actually okay. owned. So, yeah. Like actual factual handgun. Okay. Um, but... The, we weathered that whole thing, and then it just got even worse from that point on. Unless it was just gr- so grotesquely not gun like, like a like a Nerf gun or, or a Super Soaker. Even then, Super Soakers don't you don't really see them. So you see a bunch of a bunch of just huge hey, water guns. Also, in the but. '80s, they sold kids actual bows and arrows. Okay. Yes, it's true. Yep. Yeah. There was well, I th- I think the because turn- in because in school you had an archery class. Well, when it comes to dangerous dangerous t- toys from the seventies or eighties, you can't get a you can't get a single list out without having to say lawn darts. Yeah, lawn like, darts. That was a concept. Yeah, that was that was amazing. That was yeah. that was a. I remember you stole my snacks. <laughs> Run, motherfucker! <laughs> Run. <laughs> there was, we, and then you have to explain to your mom why your, your sibling has a dart in their leg. And, <laughs> that motherfucker stole my snacks. <laughs> There was there was a lot of um, toys that were kind of dangerous yeah. back in the day, and even even stuff that's still kind of sold these days, like horseshoes and croquet and and things like that, like not or bocce. Oh god. Okay, so I got a story. <laughs> oh no. Okay, so Fisher Price had a uh, this my little you know construction set type thing, and it had like a plastic toy hammer that looked like a claw hammer and wooden handle, and it had little blocks and. You bang them on the table and like a yeah, plastic screwdriver and all. So we had this as a kid. And so you, know, you play with them and whatnot. It's supposed to be for like, you know, three-year-olds, four-year-olds and whatnot. We were moving one day. My brother was three at the time, you know, um, three or three, four at the time. And he used to play with this. And apparently he got really, really, really mad at his sister. Mm-hmm. And he goes while we're moving and picks up the real hammer, thinking it is a toy hammer, and goes, "Bing!" Oh. and clocks her over the head with it. Ouch! Ow! Yeah. 
Well, me and my brother had our knockdown drag outs. I mean, you know, like I, I, I admitted last week I gave him a welt with the NES controller cable. Um, yeah, those left a few marks too yeah. back in the day. <laughs> like they, they were they were pretty uh, damaging things. He threw a VHS tape at me. Mm-hmm. And those things are bricks. Yep. Like, you know, we beat the crap out of each other when we were kids. So like, I, I'm going to take us off memory train here because y'all, y'all like, <laughs> but, well, back okay. in my day. Okay, okay. so Toys, Toys R Us was such, a, such an iconic thing. You know, it's, it's sad that we're going to be seeing it close. Yeah, you know? it is. Um, and it is weird. It, you can tell this is, it, this is a poor management s- sort of thing when they still hold like 20, one fifth of the entire toy industry market share. And this is going to have repercussions throughout the market nowadays. Uh, because they they have exclusive deals with uh, Hasbro, and I think um, what's their one? I want to say Mattel. They have exclusive deals uh, for selling certain things through those stores, and I think it's going to end up it's going to have repercussions through the market, and we're going to see some other toy uh, toy makers. Okay. Um, get hurt by this too it's true yeah you know, it, it's gonna it's gonna be a big effect across the market i'm not saying that you know i'm not saying that they won't be missed or that they won't it, that them closing is is a sad thing that was always going to happen i mean it's, it's they could feasibly stand to continue on in some way shape or form but the concept of even a toy store is i mean i see plenty of educational stores and teacher resources and things like that popping up around town uh the one time i did walk into a, a toy store uh, around here that was just some sort of small small box brick and mortar kind of thing it was almost all it was these it was sciencey education stem toys and and very very young kids kind of toys the stuff that's made out of like foam and rounded wood and you know not not anything you know no puppets no stuffed animals no like it was just this weird kind of place to walk into and be like you know where's the puzzles and things like that like I remember there was a toy store locally um next to astro zombies and it became something else or something like that and when you walked in i mean it had like like weird different types of gum and all the little wind-up toys that were made of sheet metal it was like all oh, the classic the classic kind of toys as well okay. as stuffed animals and, and games and like that little wire thing that you see in every waiting room everywhere um so I mean, it's almost like toy stores have to be small, and even then they don't last very long at that point, unless you're like FAO Schwartz, who didn't limit themselves and had sections where, you know, it was like very obviously, this is for the big kids, these are the big kid toys, and sold things that, you know, along the lines of like my, you know, microscopes, everything from microscopes to telescopes, and, you know, really, really just had like all the big name things. I mean, I got a Cybico there, and look that up if you want to know what a blast mm. from the past is. So... You're right. We should get off of nostalgia because we'll just jump right back in again. But let's jump right back in again because uh, Nintendo has announced a whole lineup of the next three months worth of releases for the Switch. Oh, let me guess. They are all re-releases of classic IPs. Ninja Uh, Turtles. There's no Ninja Turtles. Well, then I quit. Because that's what every single video game maker is doing nowadays, it seems like. Yeah. They are going, look, we are putting HD graphics. It's new. Buy it again. Well, and Nintendo is notorious for that right now because the, of the NES Classic and SNES Classic. Yes, this is true. And I fully support it because these are all the games that I know and love and they have new, fresh HD spins on them. Or at least they're coming in and making something new with the IP to some degree. There have been some faults and faltering. Like the Chrono Trigger transfer over? The, yeah, that was I guess. Pretty bad. I mean, yeah. So, that was Square Enix porting it poorly, not Nintendo. So the thing is, uh, when it comes to when it comes to like memorable IP and, and stuff like that, that especially Nintendo has been coasting on for the last what their entire generation of consoles, the whole run of Nintendo consoles has been member this, so you know, and a few new things coming out here and there. So the trouble with this, I can say there's a new Kirby game coming. Yes, Kirby Star Allies is going to come out in March 2018. Nice. Uh, it says it's slated for March 16th, hopefully. Um, looks to be... They're bringing back all of the old friends from the like the, the helpers and things like that. Meta Knight's in it. DDD's in it. All the animal friends from the handheld Kirby, Kirby <coughs> games are going to be in it. Uh, it seems to be very, very PAL-focused. I'm not sure if it's going to be multiplayer-focused or not. Um, but I say something like that. But if I say, oh, and Neon Wall is coming out the around fuck? the same time. Yeah, people go, what the hell's that? 
neon and then wall? i have to go and look it up and do all this research is it like so a I'm not wall gonna... <laughs> that's like just neon color i have, don't know but yeah like the names like dan maku unlimited three uh spiral splatter coffin dodgers the long reach <coughs> uh something called aot2 from koei tecmo manticore galaxy on fire castle of heart and alert alteric like Okay, these are the ones that are coming so out in March. Lame, lame, yeah, lame. But no, in within that, Kirby Star Allies, and then weirdly, Outlast Two. <laughs> on the Switch, which gives I have to give credit to Nintendo. At least they're they're trying to come out with games that are identifiably for the modern day gamer, <laughs> where they're acknowledging that statistically, uh, almost half of gamers, like active gamers in in. America, I want to say, if not the world, are 35 and older. Like, they need to acknowledge that it can't all be this big kidsy kind of run or this nostalgia baiting kind of thing. Well, I'm it, glad you know, they're they doing something. coming out with something like that. So, Outlast 2, great. You know, not the best Outlast, but, you know, it, it is a rather mature title. And speaking of mature titles, in April, they have announced that South Park, The Fractured Butthole... April 24th is going to be released on the Switch. They're allowing that They're, on the Switch? Well, it's Nintendo. I don't know what's going to make it past their sensors and what's not. So, uh, Naruto game, Nintendo Labo, which everybody's going nuts about. Well, everybody was going nuts about, but we'll get to that. Uh, Donkey Kong Country, t- Tropical Freeze is getting ported. Hyrule Warriors is still going to come out. They brought, they're bringing out Little Nightmares, the complete edition. So, Little oh, Nightmares nice. and the DLC for it. Um, which I've seen that played on a stream, and it's a really interesting game. It's artsy and dark and sort of a horror, a horror game. They need to remake Pocket Monsters. Pokemon? Isn't that Pokemon? No. There's Pokemon. Pokemon and... means Pocket Monster. There's another game just called Pocket Monsters for Nintendo. Look it for, up. For the NES? Yes. I'll look it up, okay? Boom. Uh, I'll look it up. Sounds like Pokemon for Pokemon. the Nintendo. No, um, it was not Pokemon. I will backhand you if you say that again. Uh, the Mega Man Legacy Collections One and Two have been announced as well. They're going to be they're going to be released on the Switch, so you're going to be able to nice. play the old Mega Man games. I like I'm two. Thinking. Dark Souls Remastered, of course. Everybody's been going nuts about that. Was going nuts. Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collector Collection. Oh my gosh, that means the uh, Bless the Sun meme is going to come back. Possibly. It's Praise the Sun. Praise the Sun. <laughs> Fuck, man, Bless get out of here. <laughs> Bless um, the Sun. Sushi Striker, which is sort of a, it looks like it's sort of a mobile kind of game. Oh, is that uh, kind of like that uh, Fruit Ninja? You, you, no, it's you link together sushi against an opponent, and then you throw the plates at the opponent and do damage to them. It's a weird kind of puzzle thing, and you could actually, it's, a, it's That's actually what I a, want my kid to pick up. It's, it's actually, look, I got sushi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Chucks it across Throw the, the plates. Um, they're, they're making a big deal about Mario Tennis Aces, which means they're bringing back Mario Tennis. Yay. Um, and it looks like they've done some, some updates to it. And they've made it so that you can actually use the controller as a controller. Oh, that's just... Or you can use oh. it as a motion controller. I could see how Wagging bad that about. goes. <laughs> <laughs> Goes right and it's yeah, it's an even tinier controller, but at least at this time they integrated the, the wrist strap. So they and they say you should use the wrist strap for everything if you're going to do any kind of motion controls. Oh, that sounds terrible. Uh, the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy, whatever, whatever I played yeah. those. Octopath Traveler sounds interesting. Square Enix game. Okay. Um, they've got a whole bunch of different characters to choose from, and that and it's like you have it's a two job system. One job affects how you interact with the world around you being able to talk to NPCs in different ways, shape and form, find out information and all of that. And then the second job is how you perform in combat, like dancer or ninja or something yeah. like that. And it is, it is a, it's not a tactic. See, it's a, it is a, an RPG to, to you stand on either side, hit, trading hits on either side of a battlefield. Uh, Captain Toad's getting a, uh, getting a switch game. Uh, there are games that have been announced with no release date. So Bayonetta, Metroid prime four, a uh, Bayonetta three. So they're making another Bayonetta specifically for, on the Switch. New Fire Emblem game, new Yoshi game, uh, Splatoon 2 is getting an expansion, the Octo expansion. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the big one, the one that everybody went nut- nuts about. As Artifact? As in, no. The big one that everyone went nuts about on the Switch. Oh. Super Smash Brothers Switch mm-hmm. is coming out. And people are already trying to start, starting to talk about roster and stuff like that. So far, from what I've seen confirmed, yes, there is Mario. Duh. There's the Breath of the Wild Zelda is confirmed. Uh, they're bringing in Splatoon, the Squid Kids from Splatoon. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be a thing. Um, aside from that, haven't heard anything. Uh, I, I, heard, I saw something kind of saying, I don't know if it's a joke, but saying that the TF2 Pyro might show up. Hmm. 
weirdly what? i don't yeah i don't think that's going to happen it might happen i don't That'd think that's weird. going to happen so at this point no but this also comes uh, on the time as of uh, the day we are recording this is march 10th also known as mario day so if you get if they bring back snake in this um Ooh, i don't know if they could do that yeah if, yeah, if they bring back if they bring back Snake in this Smash Brothers, uh, do you have to unlock him with the, by buying a player slot? <laughs> Probably. So too soon. The other thing that 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 bears mentioning um, is that a certain PC engine that is used for a lot of indie game developments is actually being it's actually having switch support developed into being able to support these games. So the other thing that is going to get kind of a cult following that is going to be glad to hear this is undertale is going to be released on the switch. Oh no. Yes. Uh, also get games like enter the gungeon. Nice. On the switch. Bullets, um, bullets, bullets, bullets. Yeah. <laughs> bullets, 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 bullets. That. Um, we're going to see uh, other third party games that have been announced. There's a hardy, there's a harvest moon game. Of course, uh, Fear Effect is coming back with a game. If you remember oh, that from God, the that PlayStation. Oh, that game was bad. Uh, I mean, um, that game was okay. Uh, Minecraft Story Tome, the, the Telltale Minecraft Of thing. course, there's going to yeah. be Minecraft. Uh, let's see. New Tales of RPGs, uh, heretofore unnamed. Nine Parchments. Yeah, I, I've already picked that up. That's actually kind of fun. Uh, Okami HD. They're going to do an HD release for Okami. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, let's see here. Fantasy Star Online 2 Cloud. Japan only. Aw, they need. But I want my fantasy star. No, I don't. They need to make Brave Fencer Musashi. Shaq Fu. Brave Alleged Fencer Musashi. <laughs> Shaq Fu. And let's see, Super Meat Boy is getting going to be put on there. Taiko Drum Master is going to be put on there. <laughs> that there. game was fun. They're bringing Terraria. Does, does like, that mean it, you get a little drum set for it too? These are games that have already come out. I think. I think. That'd be fun if they remade Taiko Drum Master. Don't, don't. Oh, there's no release date. So a lot of games, not just the ones that have already been publicly announced or that, everything like that, but the, a lot of games that are already out that use this specific, like the same engine that Undertale is using mm -hmm. um, are going to have Switch support at some point. Uh, even the Undertale announcement was kind of like when it's ready. When like, it's ready. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's Good. no there's no annou announced release date just yet. But the idea of playing Undertale on the Switch is kind of appealing. Uh, that means stuff like Cave Story or uh, La Mulana might make its way there as well, and those sound like really fun Switch games. Like these, these sound like the thing that the Switch could should really be look, looking for as far as promoting it as a handheld, because that is one thing: is the Switch is you can play on the, a TV, you can play these console games like with separate controller as a TV device kind of thing, but it's also a handheld. And unfortunately, people getting really excited about playing things like Skyrim and Dark Souls and Outlast. As a handheld, I think that's actually going to diminish the experience um, because they are made with the idea of being on this big HD screen, not this little 7-inch screen with the controllers on either side glaring and covered with fingerprints. So it's got to it's gotta have some effect, really. Being able to play something like Binding of Isaac is a perfect handheld game. It was ported to PS Vita, and then they figured out the PS Vita is crap, so they put it on... They're putting it on the Switch. It's on the Switch already. Good. Um, so, yeah, something like Undertale, perfect. That sounds like a great handheld game for something. Something that that, that necessarily has HD graphics, like La, La, La Mulana HD version. Great game, too. I recommend La, 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 La Mulana, even if it's hard to say. But um, perfectly suited for the Switch's handheld mode, as it were. So, yeah, I was just really excited to hear all that. And because, yes, we are recording on March 10th, Mario Day, Mario the other thing we should Day. probably announce is Google is using Mario and his card as part of the Google Maps thing. I don't know if that's a today-only thing or if you can do that from now on. Probably, but, they'll probably, probably let you just, do it from now on. Yeah, so, yeah, if you want, if you necessarily are are tired of that little blue arrow telling you where to go... You on, can switch it to well, Mario. You can switch it to Mario and his cart. Well, let's switch over to Valve for yeah. right now. Um, so, there was a... Big announcement what uh, about a year ago you know with uh, valve going we're gonna make something we're gonna make Yay. a game Yay. and they go we're gonna make a card game it's called artifact <laughs> yeah uh, i don't care and yeah that was the whole groan from the market <laughs> yeah the whole groan heard around the world but <clears throat> there's um and face new, slaps <laughs> but there's new stuff coming out from this now uh since they've gotten farther along in the development process mm -hmm. one of the interesting things is and this was not released earlier 
is that Valve has has hired uh, the Magic the Gathering creator Richard Garfield four years ago to start working on this game. Okay, so this is that's a huge revelation. They've been working on Artifact for four years. Four years, huh? Gabe Newell says that they are going to go back to making games, and he has, in typical Gabe Newell fashion, has put this on a high pedestal. He says that Artifact will be to uh, digital card games what Half-Life 2 was to single-player action games. Oh, God. Jerk yourself off much, Gabe? Like, what? Okay, Half-Life 2 was great. It didn't like mix up the formula not to my not to my memory in fact it's been so long since i've played a half-life game that's because they haven't put out any new half-life games but i mean the thing is here is that's i mean we got two powerful people in the market you know we got valve yeah we got we have all hail lord gaben yeah and and we have Richard Garfield. Yeah, PhD, mathematician, and the... Instrumental in the design and implementation of Magic the Gathering. Yeah. So, and it's looking like this game may come together properly. And quite frankly, I think anybody that's into Magic should be looking at this versus Magic Arena. Because... And this is all digital? Yeah, all digital. I was hoping like non-digital too. No, it's going to be digital. I I play at the shops with friends. I smell live services. I smell microtransactions. Well, of course. There's a I smell I baby s- powder. I smell, yeah. I smell baby powder, too. But, you know, like, you can say it's the greatest thing. You can, t- you can tell me it has a pedigree beyond everything else. And I'm going to say, I've been through, I've been fooled before. I've been through this song and dance. You can tell me everything that's so great about it. But until I actually see some gameplay and see exactly what goes into it, I'm only going to say it's crap, allegedly, and wait until I'm confirmed that it's crap because it already sounds like crap. Right. Yeah. Well, I I have optimism for this because <laughs> the fact is, is we have um, Valve knows how to make video games. And then they did. I still think they do. I mean, no, look, they know how to sell video games now. Well, they, <laughs> they were still successful with Dota, you know. So Dota was already successful before they bought it. The only thing they did was put a fresh coat of paint on it. They've still done a really good job with it. Still not. I don't like MOBAs. You can say Dota is the Dota is the greatest ga- thing because Valve did what it did, and it's like it's still a MOBA. I don't want to play it. If if Artifact turns out to be the greatest digital card game that ever came out, beating out Gwent and Hearthstone and all the other Magic clones and everything like that, still don't care. It's a card game. Card games used to be an annoying side quest as a part of RPGs. I don't think that they should that they deserve to be put promoted up to full on video game. <laughs> And the only one that looked even remotely interesting seemed to be handled so poorly by the developer that it's not actually worth checking out. And that was Hand of Fate. Oh, I know that one. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, we are we are starting to see like these digital card games because the thing is, is it's something you can play. You can play online with people, uh, just like anything else. But you don't have to worry about trying to go out to a shop. You don't have to worry about trying to keep up a card collection, and everything like this. And it's just the threshold of interest or entrance is lower. That's why Hearthstone's doing well and everything else. Of course it's doing well. Developers learn that they they can even save money by not having to actually print or ship anything and still force people to keep buying the same crap over and over and over again. And on top of that, they can also make it to go, here, buy this loot package. You have a chance of winning. Get a loot box. Yeah, a chance of winning the rare card. Like You didn't. That's because you're not going to unless you buy like yeah. 17 packs. And, until And like I said, until it's released and I, and I see it, and the only way that I would actually even sniff at Artifact is if I had some in some way, shape, or form a guarantee that this game was going to release and I would be able to buy it and play it and not have to three months later have people sniffing at me going, well, you only have the base game. You didn't buy enough loot boxes or expansion packs. Well, they're going to have card packs in this. I mean, obviously, come yep. on. It's, it's, it's a card game. It's a card game. <laughs> it, it, card games can be shit. <laughs> it's they, shit. Make, they print shit in card games. <laughs> hey, did you know another game that they're going to be coming out with? What's that? A Munchkin Ninja Turtles. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, they've done everything else, Munchkin. Mm-hmm. They've, they've covered all the big stuff, and then they went Axe Cop and Adventure Time and everything like that. And mm-hmm. Now it's just becoming the thing. I, I'm... I mean, if it's something you if it's something you like, and I mean, I'm pretty sure there's going to be like Rick and Morty Munchkin at some point. I think there is. The thing about it is, Munchkin inherently 
is a fun game and it doesn't matter how many editions you own or how many types you own they all mesh together and you can play no matter how many you own no matter when they came out mm-hmm. artifact sounds like the kind of game where if you buy it and you just don't play it for six months then you're gonna have to buy it again in order to play it oh by the way yeah here we got sidetracked so with this whole artifact announcement and the whole thing with valve and artifact that's the big thing but they have said that this is the first of many new games Mm -hmm. because lord gaben has said i do not like the direction that pc games are going into we are in the dark times so lord gaben is going to come in and going to fix things is this he's going to make gaming great again that that tagline i'm refusing to acknowledge the second one that you just shoved in there but that that tagline about he's going to come in and fix things is just as bad as john romero is going to make you his bitch Mm, john romero is a little bit different than (laughs) gabe newell okay or john john carmack can totally fix the oculus rift like (laughs) you know these are industry leaders. I will acknowledge they have had some great accolades. They have done some great things for video gaming. They have come out with wonderful things. But that's all for shit if they can't deliver. And saying that they're going to deliver, we already learned that with Dai Katana, with John Romero saying, it's going to be this great thing, and I'm going to have all of this stuff in it, and it's going to be ready that now, and now turned into three years this game will allow you to explore space (laughs) and you'll be able to go do stuff and when we release it it's going to be crap yeah and now we've and we have people signing on for the sales pitch with stuff like early access and things like that so yes if gabe newell is dissatisfied with the way the video direction video video games are going great Give me give me titles, give me lists, give me give me actual plan, plans and plots. Don't Come give on, me, this uh, is... I'm going to fix it. No, no, Lord, no. You know, I'm going to wave a magic wand and sprinkle pixie dust all over the whole thing, and it's going to be fixed. Like his big thing is like with the mobile games and some of the other things, and it's one of those things. I don't think he exactly said he's going to fix it, but you know that's yeah. that's the Lord gave him mentality. And the thing is, is look, this is um, they've rested on their laurels for quite some time. Mm-hmm. Um, and they've tried things like uh, HTC Vive. They've tried like the Steam Link and the Steam Controller. And to see them actually get back to the roots of game development, it's probably a good thing. Okay? Because that's what Valve was known for, making games, before they made uh, Steam. And then they were known for shilling crap for any amount possible. Not at first. <laughs> like just previous accolades don't make up for the absolute shit pile standing in front of them. That's the thing. Is okay. It comes out. I'm gonna say. I'm just. I'm just tempering my excitement. I'm not gonna be just getting. You know, towing the line and being like, "Yep, Lord Gaben, and let's go ahead and go." No. As soon as I see something, I'll change my tune. But you should look at a picture of Lord Gaben nowadays. Yeah. He looks like Santa Claus. I, I like he, the T, I like the TF2 model. He he's got that you can get light source filmmaker. He's got like that. white beard hair and everything now, yeah. and his hair's cut short and everything. It looks like the, he looks like Santa Claus now. Cool, it's cool. kind of crazy, but come on, it's like I'm excited about this, you know? Nope. And you're not excited because of Steam. No, that's one of the reasons. Oh. Not Steam. The fact that Valve hasn't released a video game that I kept, that I find memorable since Portal Two, and even that 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 was a cash in on the fact that Portal, a stocking stuffer, was just so goddamn popular. Portal Two was damn good though. E- okay, I mean it, it answered some questions we didn't need <laughs> answered, but it gave us more Glados, and unfortunately it gave us Wheatley, the most annoying goddamn c- character aside this side of Spaceball. So, folks like. Because Valve says that they're going to come back and they're going to do it right doesn't mean that they're going to come back and they're going to do it right. Like, that's that's all hype train. The so fact he's that Artifact, grumpy that, and he's happy. The fact that Artifact is coming out and it's a digital card game that reeks, reeks of selling you the same game over and over and over again, month after month after month, does not bode well for the fact that they're saying many other games coming out. Because you have to remember that they have concentrated on Steam as a platform to the point where it is unmitigated crap. Is a place that every single indie game developer can shove together whatever asset they can pu- they can pull out of their ass from whatever free free game engine they can download and shill it for two bucks. Well, this sounds like what they're starting to do with the Nintendo Switch too. <laughs> hmm. But they're not two bucks; those are sixty. You're right because there's the Nintendo markup. <laughs> You're saying. 
So this has been going on for years. Early access stuff on. Uh, um, what's the word? What What is that word? Beta testing. Yeah, free beta testing, unregulated. That's the word. Unregulated asset flipping. You know, and it's gotten to the point where the gaming community in general, the critic community, is is kind of tired of it. And me being as some sort of like entry level critic when it comes to that kind of thing, I have to say, if they come out and make a statement like that, good on you. That's great. That's just as bad as a as a politician setting up on a podium going, I will totally honor my promises. Like, you know, it's <laughs> when I see games released, and I'm not saying that I have any expectations for what those games like be. I'm not going to sit there and put on the hat and go, woo, Half-Life 3. Put, put your cane down. Put your cane down. Okay? Ah, ah, ah. Half-Life Rabble, 3. Rabble, rabble, rabble. Half-Life 3 has not been confirmed. <laughs> yes, okay? I know. But, but they, they, I mean, Valve says it wants to make games. Good. Make games. Don't say you're going to. Do it. We might find out some more um, coming out here soon. And one of the other things is they are also looking at... Uh, there's going to be three VR games also coming out. Hmm. So maybe wank, we're going to finally wank. get Half-Life VR. Half-Life VR being Half-Life 3. Wank, that wank, makes wank. sense if you think about it. It's all wank. Well, okay. I can't take the piss out of VR because I actually do. I am excited for VR. I like what it's capable of doing. Unfortunately, those capabilities have to be harnessed by the development community. So if they are saying they're going to try to come out with some actual Valve developed VR games, there I will be the slightest bit excited because at least that means that they a, a developer who is known for innovation and pushing the envelope in, in a sense i'm going to take that whole was it five minutes of ranting oh my gosh yeah i'm going to take the whole five minutes of ranting and say what that is is fucking prove it it's a combination of prove it and about time you know that that what that is the the whole vr thing great if a developer is going to take that take on that and actually see, do something see, with it. Look, that works. the market is going in the wrong but direction. Is, You've just proved it with that your is rant a here. Tiny, tiny, tiny bit of excitement. That is the smallest little modicum of excitement covered in a heap of aggression and impatience and having to put up with all of the crap that I have put up for for the last nine years. Here's my excitement. Yay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So on that note, <laughs> yeah. I think I before we get into another rant. Oh, yeah. You can oh, get me started God. real easy. Gosh. So, yeah. this is... <clears throat> we're going to stop there for the week. We're going to see what ends up happening. There may be some more announcements with Valve in the coming week and whatnot. Uh, but, you know, this has been the GAC Podcast. You can listen to us on iTunes and listen to us on the Android uh, podcast section of the Google Play. I said that weird. Kind of. Yeah. I mean, I don't think anybody listens to us there, but whatever. Uh, but you can check us out on Twitter. You can check us out on Facebook. And we're up on YouTube in video format also. And we will see you all next time. Bye, Bye guys. Guess what? If you go on the internet not expecting to get, not expecting to have some sort of contentious debate, then you're using it wrong. Like, it's supposed to be used for porn and database access. Nothing. You know, some would say porn is a contentious debate. With myself. And I'm a master at it. Bang. <laughs> and I'm a master at it. Master debater. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, dude, I'm a little beat. I got into a, a fight with my erection last night. Good news is I beat it single-handedly. Ah, uh, but so you know what a threesome is. You know what a foursome is. Now you know why people call me handsome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it's it's a. Uh, I know why they call it threesome, and I know why they call two people twosome. Now I know why they call you handsome. <laughs>